Hello, welcome to Track Toys. Uh, today I wanted to go over a uh, kind of do a review of uh, another one of my, I uh, wouldn't say toys, but uh, one of my utilities for my toys. Uh, it's a uh, utility trailer that I use to take to travel on uh, long trips with my going, and um, it's been great. Uh, and actually what I do, I, I keep all my camping gear in it and uh, so it's ready to go. All I need is to, you know, put in whatever else like a cooler or my clothes or what have you. So, um, let me turn this around. And here we go. I bought this from uh, Northern Tool. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but right now it's... I think they have it on sale for $5.29, but I think I got it much less than that. I don't remember what it was. It was four years ago, I think, three years ago. Uh, actually, no, uh, I'm sorry. It was 2019, 2019. So I bought it uh, March 2019 uh, to go to the West Coast. So it uh, comes with... Uh, carrying basket in the front opens up has these little hydraulic struts and as you can see I keep all my camping gear in here all year round it saves a lot of space and I just keep it over there in the corner. Another thing you might have noticed is the wheels. Now the stock wheels come with a four lug wagon wheel type wheel. And <laughs> you're not actually supposed to run these past 45, 50 miles an hour, so they say. Uh, I've heard of people going 70 on them. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but I would also, because they're bias pliers. They're bias ply tires, and uh, they run at 60 pounds. So uh, 70 and above, uh, I, I think that they're in for an explosion sometime soon. So not a good idea. So I bought these wheels and tires from a, a trailer wheel place. Uh, I think I spent like a few hundred dollars on them and they come with radials these are Falcon radials and they're good for about uh, 80 85 miles an hour I don't actually run them past that I usually run them at about 75 and just kind of maintain speed on the interstates at 75 even though some of the Texas freeways are much higher than that uh, especially after San Antonio, it gets up to about 80. Not much in the way of, you know, uh, structure. It's pretty simple. I built it. Took a, a few, a few days to build. The top locks I don't have my key with me but uh, this locks and I also bought a lock for this thing here to replace this pin Especially if you have to leave it out overnight in a hotel parking lot, it's going to get stolen. And uh, I bought some locks for the wheels. Pressure on the wheels, I think it's like 65. The only other thing was is that these tires are just a slightly taller. I didn't realize that at the time uh, until I got on the road. 
and they didn't actually start breaking until when I got to California. California has some rough roads, and uh, they hit some pretty big, uh, pretty big bumps, and this thing bounced around a lot. And uh, with the bouncing, I didn't have it. I didn't have this trouble trouble until I, I actually reached the the West Coast. And uh, then when I got to Oregon, I realized they were broken. I called Northern Tool. You can replace these. I think they're like $25 a side. And then I'll just space them out right here to get a little more clearance. Other than that, it's, it's, uh, it was a real good trailer. I've, uh, I've gone uh, over, let's see, I've taken two trips so far. One to the West Coast, I was like 8,500 miles. Uh, and, uh, and up through Washington, Oregon, uh, camping in, in Oregon and uh, Idaho. I was going to try to make it to Montana, but unfortunately it started to snow and uh, I heard there was some ice on the road, so I just turned south. Now you're kind of wondering, okay, from a four lug to a five lug, how did you do that? Well, let me show you. I went to Northern Tool and bought these hubs. I wasn't sure if they'd fit, uh, so I had to carefully measure everything out. And uh, these are the ones that I bought that actually work on this on this trailer that you can uh, swap out. And you can also get the the seals and the bearings uh, after you've run it uh, for about uh, six or seven thousand miles. And I did 8,000, so they got changed out after when I got back. So it has new bearings on it now. And occasionally I'll take the, I'll, I'll hook it up to the gold wing and um, take it about. Here's the stats on it. As you see, the four lug four lug hub is in there. Kept them in case I wanted to put them back on and sell it, which I probably won't sell it anytime soon. And these are still brand new; they haven't even been on the road yet. As far as maneuverability, um, it's it's very light. I can just pick it up, roll it over. Looking on the bow wing. And this jack stand kind of has a little pin here. Pull it out. That pin holds it down. So. Now the gold wing barely knows it's there. I, I do realize that it does have a slight uh, mileage differential. Um, I would say anywhere between oh, 10 to 20 miles less per tank than it usually gets, especially when this thing's loaded. 
So I think on the motorcycles, this thing uh, is limited to 200 pounds. On a car, uh, I think it's up to 600 pounds. Now another thing is something I pay attention to is that um, tongue weight. Now, if you get anything past 40 pounds, you're you're looking at uh, some you're looking at some issues. Uh, mostly the tire wear. You'll have uh, a worn tire before you even get close to finishing your trip. So I would advise keeping it down to 20 to 25 pounds if possible, which means that um, you, you know you're not supposed to really load uh, a lot of uh, equipment in the back of the trailer because they sway a lot. But this one doesn't really do that. It's just too light. So I usually load everything, all the heaviest stuff in the back and some of the lighter stuff in the front. Um, what I usually have, what I'm, I'm thinking about doing uh, later on is putting some kind of separator uh, to keep things from, you know, from uh, sliding forward, which happens a lot because I have to check it every time I stop. Uh, like every gas stop, I'll check it and make sure that the weight is, you know, down to 20 to 30 pounds. So uh, that just helps with the tire uh, tire wear and uh, and the back suspension so that's pretty much it it's this thing is pretty light it just comes right up Put my cooler in here uh oh yeah i've i've you know on this basket i i've also loaded my cooler and my gas can in here on on this basket and uh well it doesn't really it, it causes it, it's better for a car than it is for a motorcycle uh, unless this is you know uh, there's no weight here and like you have an empty cooler or an empty gas can but if they're full, you're gonna cause a lot of weight here. So you don't want that. So they usually go in the back and everything in front of it. And that that, that kind of helps with the with the, the ride uh, on the trailer and on the bike. So it won't jerk it around or things like that. And it always so puts some weight down on the on the um, trailer suspension so it won't bounce around so it makes it a little smoother uh the radial tires really does a job uh I, i'm not sure about the bias tires uh, i really haven't used them but uh, the radials they really really make a hell of a difference so that's pretty much it it's a good trailer um, it comes completely disassembled uh, you know the frame comes in just one piece and you pretty much have to put this together right up in here the basket and I also had to buy a different uh, deal here for the bike because the one it comes with didn't work too well. So I had to buy one that works. Because the Goldwing takes a kit. It's a very expensive kit. Uh, you can't just hook it up to the taillights in the back. Um, it requires a different setup. So uh, Goldwings are a little different. Um, and it comes with its own power source so it uses it actually uses the battery not the uh, ignition system itself 
and its own and, and its own relay. So uh, it, it actually works better for the Go Wing, and it won't uh, cause any electrical issues. So. So, after the ride, just take it off and uh, wheel it back into the corner of the garage. Oh, also, another thing on these. Uh, you probably can't see it, but on the hub itself, there is a valve to release your bearings in between trips before you actually have to, uh, you know, take them off and repack. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, let's come back in here. easier without me holding this phone. And there you go. Like a glove. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe or like. Thank you. Bye. As you can see, with the car in, it's uh, snuggled right back in there in the corner of the garage. Out of the way.